Uh, Secretary you know, Becerra, we welcome you, 25th Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services, first Latino to hold the office in the history of the United States. You have dedicated your career to public service, most recently serving as the Attorney General of California from 2017 to 2021. Prior to that post, he served 12 terms in Congress as a member of the House of Representatives. While serving in Congress, he was the first Latino member of the Committee on Ways and Means. He served as ranking member of the Ways and Means Subcommittee on Social Security and ranking member of the Subcommittee on Health. Secretary, we welcome you. I've appreciated the chance to work with you often uh, over uh, the years and uh, uh, appreciate your commitment to advocating, advocating for the people served by the Department of Health and Human Services. And go ahead with your remarks. Chairman Wyden and Ranking Member Crapo and to all the members, thank you for the invitation. A lot has happened in the years since I last spoke to you about budgets. More than 16 million Americans have secured health insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplaces. That's an all-time high. Altogether, more than 300 million Americans now carry insurance to cover their health care needs, a historic high as well. The President's new lower-cost pre prescription drug law has capped insulin at $35 per month and made preventative vaccines like the flu, COVID, and shingles vaccines available for free under Medicare. Moving forward, this new law gives us the right to finally negotiate lower prescription drug prices for Americans. And to cap it all off, the Biden-Harris administration has safely and effectively executed the largest adult vaccine program in U.S. history, achieving nearly 700 million shots in arms during the COVID pandemic without charge. The FY 2024 budget proposes $144 billion in discretionary funding and $1.7 trillion in mandatory funding for HHS. It positions us to tackle the urgent challenges we face, including a growing behavioral health crisis and future public health threats. It also funds operations and mission-critical infrastructure needed to build a healthier America, moving the nation from an illness care system to a wellness care system. An illness care system leaves our most vulnerable families behind. A wellness care system invests in providing the full spectrum of health care to all Americans. Illness care allows the price of prescription drugs to skyrocket. Wellness care starts by prescribing fruits, vegetables, and exercise. It treats food as medicine. Illness care requires you to get a referral by your family physician to see a specialist for mental health services. Wellness care? Well, it lets you get mental health care the moment you walk through the door of your family physician's office. Illness care forces hardworking Americans to deplete their life savings to get the long-term care they need. Wellness care, it invests early in long-term care, like in-home care, so our older American adults and our Americans with disabilities can thrive at home and in their communities. Our budget invests in wellness care. We invest more than $30 billion to prepare us for the next COVID or public health crisis, including a billion dollars to replenish our nation's strategic national stockpile. Our behavioral, on behavioral health, too many of our loved ones are dying from suicide or overdose, so we increase access to crisis care. We grow the behavioral health workforce, and we beef up substance use services. We are also gearing up to handle more than 6 million additional contacts from people who are experiencing a mental health crisis through 988, the three-digit suicide prevention lifeline we stood up last year. This budget covers two million adults left out by Medicaid by their home states and extends tax credits that make health care more affordable for millions of Americans. It would also ensure that expanded postpartum Medicaid coverage for a new mom and her baby is here to stay. The President's budget not only strengthens Medicare for today's seniors, but protects and strengthens it for the next generation. We also take care of our family members in this budget, investing $600 billion in child care and preschool programs and $150 billion to strengthen Medicaid home and community-based services. This budget funds the Cancer Moonshot, ARPA-H. It invests in the Title X Family Planning Program essential to so many of our families. It delivers on our commitments made as part of the National Strategy for Hunger, Nutrition, and Health. It opens more community health centers. And important to me as a former Attorney General, it bolsters our health care fraud and abuse detection and enforcement work. And the President's budget honors our responsibilities to Indian Country with more than $2 billion in new resources in 2024. Last year, for the first time, you gave the Indian Health Service advanced appropriations 
providing the same protection against budget uncertainty that other health services receive. We hope to build on that prog progress this year. This budget reflects the President's and our values and commitments. It helps begin the move from a nation focused on illness care to one about wellness care, and most importantly, it ensures health and wellness are within the reach for all Americans. On behalf of the women and men of the Department of Health and Human Services, we look forward to working with you.